we finally get to brains. Brains are a puzzle. We do not know how brains work. We do not know what brains do, what the right language to describe brains are. We have many approaches that try to tackle smaller parts of this problem. They all run into the problem that we don't fundamentally know what brains, how to understand brains. And we have developed in the last hundred years or so, the habit of stuffing all the mysteries of the world into the brain, as if the brain were responsible for everything in the entire world. And we speak about our brains as if they were our familiars, as if they walked around with us, we could consult with them, as if they had separate opinions. You say, my brain doesn't want to do that, my brain can't do that, uh, my brain is full. We type, what do brains do, into Google. We see what the brains look like, taste like, do. What the brains and chocolate have in common. There are mysteries here. So I'd like to begin with a short video which tries to make the fundamental question about brains tangible so that you can feel it and intuit it yourself. You see, it's a rather odd thing, this, about brains. They're made out of meat. Let's have a look at the video. They are made out of meat. Meat? There's no doubt about it. We picked up several from different parts of the planet, took them aboard our recon vessels and probed them all the way through. They are completely meat. It's impossible. What about the radio signals? They use radio signals to talk, but the signals don't come from them. Signals come from machines. Well, who made the machines? That's who we need to contact. Meat made the machines. It's ridiculous. Meat can't make machines. These creatures are the only sentient race in this sector, and they are made out of meat. Maybe they're like the Orphali, a carbon-based intelligence that goes through a meat stage. They are born meat and they die meat. We studied them for several of their lifespans. Spare me. But maybe they're like the Wedeli, only part meat. We thought of that, since they do have meat heads like the Wedeli. But as I told you, we probed them. No brain, eh? Oh, there's a brain, all right. It's just that the brain is made out of meat. What does the thinking, then? The brain does the thinking. The meat. Hey, how you doing, man? What's up, boys? Hey. God, you're serious. They're made out of 
meet. And they've been trying to contact us for almost 100 of their years. Fuck! So, what does this meet have in mind? First, it wants to talk to us. Then, I imagine it wants to explore the universe, contact other sentiences. So then they can actually talk? Oh, yes. Except they do it with meat. Well, no, but just before you said that they use radio. But what do you think is on the radio? Meat sounds. You know how when you slap or flap meat, it makes a noise? They talk by flapping their meat at each other. They can even sing by squirting air through their meat. Oh my God. This is altogether too much. I advise that we erase the records and forget the whole thing. It's cruel. But like you said, who wants to meet meat? Now, the, the ones that we brought onto the vessel, the ones you probed, you sure they won't remember? They'll be considered crackpots, if they do. We went into their heads and smoothed out their meat, so that to them we are only a dream. A dream to meat. How strangely appropriate that we be meat's dream. And with that in mind, we're going to distinguish between neuroscience, which studies the meat, studies the brain as an organ of the body, following its anatomy and physiology, and cognitive neuroscience, which is an entirely different undertaking. There, we try to understand the structures and processes of the nervous system and the whole body in to shed light on what we think we know about ourselves. So there we project psychological predicates like attention, emotion, psychological theory, the theory of perception, the notion of mental representation, our very, very fuzzy and ill-founded ideas about what cognition is. And we attribute then to the brain lots and lots of different kinds of functions. So cognitive neuroscience has a different perspective on the brain than a merely organismic biological perspective. And importantly in all this, cognitive neuroscience tries to tackle the almost impossible question of what anything we can record, see, measure, notice, is for. With that for question, whole worlds of ignorance open up. So in the next video, we'll look at what we mean when we say what is something for, or what, does, what function does it have.